today we're going to talk um, about enlarge your tent. And there's an urgency in us to deliver this message right now. Because we know God of favor could go on for another 12 years, you know? <laughs> Just kidding. We promise it won't. But um, there's an urgency in us to deliver this message today. God is stirring something. And there is something different happening in our church right now than has happened before. And we've, we've been a church for 15 and a half years. Literally had no hot clue what we were doing when we started. Still don't always, but bless God for his grace and mercy. But right from the start, I mean, from the moment we started, God started giving us visions of where we were going, prophetic words. Um, we've literally had probably 200 or more prophetic words from different ministers around the, around the country. Around the world. Go to, yeah, yeah, I went to randomly into Israel and this guy looked like a homeless guy came up to me and, and started prophesying over me. I'd never met him before, nailing exactly everything God had shown us. How random is that? But that God, that this would be a place of healing, that people from around the world are going to come in and be healed and be able to go out and fulfill their purpose. That people would walk in one way and leave transformed. That sick bodies would be lining up to get in the door and they would leave healed. Right? This is not big enough to contain what God has for us. Come on. He's shown us thousands of people of being able to raise up leader who go and take that move of God around the world. Yes. And over this, we, over this last month, every, we've had a lot of guest speakers through. And they all said, you know what? This is your time. We have felt something since we moved into this location that we were shifting into the season of fulfillment. Yeah, yeah. Come on. You see, there's, there's a season of preparation <laughs> And there's the season of fulfillment. Yes. And I look at Joseph, his journey. As, a, as the youngest of all of his brothers, God gave him a dream that he would rule the land. He would rule over his father and his brothers. Well, his brothers weren't so happy about that. <laughs> Sold him into slavery. He went as a captive, ended up in prison. All these different things. <clears throat> ended up, after 13 years of slavery, of being in prison, he ended up being second in charge of the land of Egypt. The thing with him, though, is fulfillment doesn't always come in our time frame. Yeah. And the journey to get to fulfillment isn't always our journey. <laughs> Not what we pick. I just heard a minister this week said, if God told you, actually it was Miles Monroe, he said, if God told you the journey to get from here to your fulfillment, you wouldn't take the journey. <laughs> right? Well, God has just spoken so deeply to us that, yeah, we haven't liked the journey for 15 years. Moving, I lost track. Maybe it's 10 times. I don't even know anymore, okay? <clears throat> We're trying to wipe it from our memory. <laughs> Forgetting things that are behind, you know, we want to press it. <clears throat> but, but we need to realize God is in the middle of a boat to do something. And um, I want to show you who, who we are, because we're not in a normal season. We've become a movement, and our growth track is actually called the movement, and I want to show you the definition of movement. The movement definition, a diverse group of people working towards a common goal. What I love about our church is we are ethnically diverse, we are culturally diverse, we are age diverse, <laughs> right? We, we are diverse in our uh, income levels, right? Because that's what the church is supposed to be. A diverse group of people who come together to see what God could do. Now, what is that goal that we're going towards? Take a look at this. this is, you'll hear me say this all the time. To see every life radically transformed by the power and presence of God. Amen. A moment in his presence can change everything. Yes. And transformation is our goal at the church. Yes. Right? We, we want to see God radically move. Let's and look. so today, we, we want to dig into understanding this season we're in. Isaiah 43, verses 18 and 19, it says, Stop dwelling on the past. Don't even remember these former things. I am doing something brand new. Something unheard of. Even now, it sprouts and grows and matures. Don't you perceive it? 
I will make a way in the wilderness and open up flowing streams of water in the desert and rivers in the wilderness. There's something key in this scripture that I want us to see. Don't you perceive it. Don't you perceive it. It's possible to totally miss the fact that you are in the middle of a miracle. You see, God is doing something already. I mean, it's crazy what God is doing right now. But we have to perceive it. That's what the scripture says. He says, because if you perceive it, then I'm going to open up rivers in the desert. In other words, I'm going to do impossible things. I'm going to open opportunities that should have never been yours. I'm going to make things that should, you know, science and the earth says should not happen. I'm going to make them happen. But first, we have to what? Perceive it. I think about the children of Israel. They were taken out of slavery from Egypt supernaturally. If you don't know the story, just go cheat and, and watch the King of, e- uh, King of Egypt, right? Prince of Egypt movie. It'll tell you the whole story. Anyhow, they get supernaturally taken out. Then they're being chased. God supernaturally opens the Red Sea and they cross over on dry land. Then God supernaturally drowns out all the enemy. Then God supernaturally gives them food from heaven every day. Water from rocks. Water from rocks. Yeah. Right, right. And they were grumbling. We should go back to Egypt. We should go back to Egypt. Can you believe it? We study this story going, wow. But they were in the middle of it and didn't perceive it. And what happened is when they, after about 15 to 18 months, finally got to the promised land that God had promised them for hundreds and hundreds of years that they had been waiting for, Because they hadn't perceived the miracle they were already in, they didn't believe the miracle that God could overcome the giants in the land, and they walked away in fear and had to wander the desert for 40 years because they didn't perceive it. We have to perceive the season we are in. Come on. Each one of us have a choice when we walk in here. You can sit here going, I don't care what they're doing. That just looks weird. The guy does tell funny jokes. Though. Sometimes. You know. Sometimes they're corny. Like, why do I know? Like, what's up with them? They're both speaking on the platform. What's with that? <laughs> you can come in here with all kinds of walls up, and you're gonna, you can miss what God wants to do in your life. Amen. Or you can come in and go, hey, I haven't got a hot clue what they are about. I haven't got a hot clue who they are or why they're doing it. But maybe, just maybe, this God they talk about is real. Come on. You know, if we look at our church even the last month, how many miracles God did in the last month? Come on, people. Never mind the last 15 years. We here on a Sunday... (laughs) Between five and ten of them here and then the campus in Winnipeg, they're hearing and then we usually get, oh, by the way, laters. Are you with me? We're talking instant miracles. Where God just showed up and ministered to people, whether it's been online, we're getting uh, 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 responses from people online that are getting super, supernatural things are happening. And it's interesting because... When, when, when uh, Jan, John and Janice were here last week, and I mean, John ran one of the largest churches in Dallas, and he said to me, he says, you don't understand what's going on here. This is not normal for church-type things going on. He says, I had a church of 3,500. Are you with me? He says, what's happening here is not normal. He says, what's happening here is a revival center is about to break loose and all heaven's about to be released. And they went a step further. They said, if our grandkids weren't living close to us, we'd move here to join what God's in the middle of doing. Come on, people. And we can just take things for granted. Oh, yeah, well, he just healed cancer. He just raised a couple people from the dead. It was just a little bit of this. It was just a little bit of that. You know, they say in the Catholic Church, once you have three miracles, they sainthood you. I would have to line, I don't know how many of you guys up in sainthood you. Are you with me? But I want you to know, Mass is still at 10 a.m., so you're good to come. 
So people put labels on this and that, but what's what God is in the middle of doing? And we don't get it sometimes because it's just, well, it just happens all the time. It's not normal what God is in the process of doing. And, and, and I looked at, uh, John just looked at me when we were, when they were here last week and they were talking to us and he said, do you know why God's doing so many supernatural things? I said, no, it's a good thing to ask though. Come on. How, how many of you know it's good to have outside perspective sometimes? And he says, because your church doesn't want anything from anybody. That's not trying to take anything from anybody. Not trying to get money from people. Not trying to this, not trying to that. He says, and when that happens, purity of the holiness of God starts getting released. And supernatural things start happening. Because God will trust you at a different level. Are you, somebody hearing this? And when we humble ourselves, because we tell people we didn't heal you. Listen, we might have laid hands on you, but it wasn't our power that healed you. Come on, let's, let's, let's take all these silly labels off of things. When, when you pray for somebody, it's his power operating through you. It's your obedience doing what God asks you to do, but it's his power. God wants to have his power released in greater measures on this earth. He just needs some willing vessels. And they don't have to have it all together. They don't have to be educated at a high level. They just have to be saying to God, I think this could work. Let's try it out. Let's give it a whirl. Come on, somebody. And we got to just be people of God that say, let's give it a whirl. What do we got to lose? What do we have to lose? Your eyes could get healed. Because that's what happened to me 28 years ago. Well, just wait till you're 50. You're going to need bifocals. I said, well, I'm perfectly fine at going into 57. Come on, somebody. <laughs> I said, either he did or he didn't do it. Come on. Right, That's good. We, we, we miss God sometimes in these miracles. Well, we just take it for, oh, yeah, well, I just... No, no, what God is in the middle of doing, and some of you are sitting here thinking, I just got invited here. What am I doing here? Watch what God does for you today. He just loves people. He just does things for people. We find out about it later. I said, we have the best seats in the house. We've got front row seats to see what God's doing. And so do you. Because God is doing supernatural things. I want to share, before we go on, we just want to share a testimony. I've just... The kind of stuff that God can do. My name is Elizabeth Thomas, and I've been coming to the source for about 10 years now. Started about 10, 11 months ago. I purchased a vehicle. It began to mess up, so unfortunately I wasn't able to use it right after I bought it. I kept calling around, find someone to be able to fix it within reason, and I kept getting told that it was going to be hundreds of thousands of dollars. As I kept praying, you know, Lord, show me. You know, show me the mechanic that I can go to. Show me, you know, what I could do to raise the money up to be able to, per you know, to be able to fix what's wrong. I was serving on children's ministry. I was not going to allow anything to stand in my way. So I was riding my bicycle 16 miles out to the church, out at Christian Retreat, and I was riding it 16 miles back. Kept staying faithful to God, and He had me go. 10 blocks out of my way, like completely in the opposite direction of where I go from home. I just so happened to drive by a mechanics shop and I noticed that they had the exact same type of vehicles that I was looking to get fixed. I'm like, no, it's, it can't be. So I drove past it, got a block down the road and something nagged at me to turn back around. So I turn around and I go into the office and Explained to him the situation. The lady in the office just started smiling. She says, let's take a look at it and we'll go from there. I look at the back of their business card and it's a Christian owned mechanic shop. So I'm like, all right, Lord, I knew, I knew at that point it was, it was God hearing my prayer. So they take a look at it and they tell me exactly what's wrong with it. Um, almost pennies on a dollar compared to what everybody else has been telling me that they're going to have to, you know, charge to fix it. And I'm like, oh, wow, I'm still still having to figure out how I'm going to get this money. In this process, I'm getting letters, and I should have looked on the envelope 
and actually opened it up. Didn't think anything of it. And I'm still praying, you know, Lord, show me, you know, how am I going to raise this money to get my vehicle fixed? It just so happened that I ended up getting three of those letters during the same time that I'm talking to this mechanic. I open one of them up. I call the number that's on the paper. I had completely and totally forgotten that I had invested in a job that I had had 16 years prior. And I'm like, oh my goodness, you've got to be kidding me. Not only was it enough for me to get my vehicle fixed, it was also enough to be able to do all of the repairs on the inside that I needed to do. 16 years, I had completely forgot that I even had that investment. Completely forgot. How could it not have been from God? Not only me forgetting, but in him bringing it to me when I needed it. I know the vehicle that I have is meant to be used for God. I felt love. I also felt very unworthy. There's times where I don't listen to him. But I also knew that he loved me enough to take care of me. And the overwhelming joy. And honestly, the question why? Why me? I rejected him for so long. The things that he's done for me in these past few years have just been just wow. From the moment I drove onto the parking lot of the church, I've gone from the bottom of the barrel to standing on the mountaintop now. There's been so many things that has changed in my life. From actually being able to understand the Bible through the preaching, because they break it down. Not only do they break it down, but I'm able to I'm able to read it for myself and understand it a lot better because I've opened up. My name is Elizabeth Thomas, and my life has been radically transformed. Radically transformed is not even close to being what I can say. <laughs>Praise the Lord. That's what it's about. Yes. And how many more people need an encounter like that. To see their lives transformed. To see God do what God wants to do for them. So to do that as a church, we need to perceive the season we're in. In order to make sure that no one who needs life transformation is left out. That they find Jesus. That we see lives transformed. You know... Perceiving a season is really important. Here in Florida, we have summer all year long, right? But if I brought my heavy parka, if you don't, from Florida, if you don't, like really super heavy coat, okay? (coughs) Winnipeg knows what I'm talking about. And started wearing it outside right now, how long would that last? (laughs) You know, Humidex 115, and now I've escalated to like feeling it's 150, right? Because it's not the right season for that piece of clothing. But believe me, when I go to Winnipeg in the winter, I'm not wearing shorts and a tank top outside. (laughs) Right? And I suggest you not do the same thing either. Right? That coat that is good in the winter is not good in the summer. It means you have to adapt. You have to adapt to the current season you are in. You have to perceive the season. And when you perceive the season, you can adapt to the season so that you can participate in the season with joy. Come on. And experience it to the fullest. Right? So it's so important. Let, let me read perceive. Isaiah 43 19 in the Amplified Version. It says, Behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive and know it? And will you not give heed to it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. So what is giving heed? The definition is paying attention to, giving careful consideration to, and not to take it lightly. So when God is speaking, he says, don't blow me off. You know, when people, you, we can do this really easy. I I heard that. I heard that before. We're, We're like this. We're like blowing it off. God says when, it's, when, it, when, when he's speaking, he said, take heed, don't, don't blow this off. This is serious. Take serious consideration, but pay attention to what I'm trying to tell you. See, I believe a lot of times the miracles are right in front of us, but we're not paying attention and, and, and we're, 
heard that before. And a lot of times God brings one opportunity after another opportunity and we will miss them because we're not paying attention, because we're not giving heed. We pray for God to do a miracle and then we think, well, it's like buying a lottery ticket, let's see what happens. No, no, the Bible says this is the confidence. Everybody say confidence. Did you have confidence that when we prayed at the beginning of the service and took authority over the devil trying to bring a storm into Florida to disrupt Florida? Do you have full confidence that God can pull it off? Yeah. Absolutely. Why? Because you went, we went to the throne room. We, we came together as a church and we prayed. Amen. Of course he's going to show up. Amen. Just like two weeks ago when, when we said, hey, we need some rain and some, war- and some cooler weather. Well, guess what happened? God did it. So we ask ourselves, are we going to believe that God can still do some supernatural things? Are we going to take heed so that we watch what he's doing and be able to step in to what he has for us? There are consequences to not wisely discerning a season. There are consequences. Just like I'd end up with heat stroke if I was wearing a parka on the beach this afternoon. (laughs) There are consequences if we don't be intentional about what God is doing in this moment. Many times God will speak things over us or something's stern in our heart or we're all excited about we can feel God's doing something, but we don't do anything about it. Come on. And just like, well, God will just do it. But God works with us and through us. So we need to be participating. Um, So what what should be our response? How do we participate in this season? And I want to just say this, is first of all, I'm not trying to guilt, manipulate, or take anything from you guys, okay? What I'm trying to do is us, our our job is to help you move into your greatest life in God. Amen. And by being in this church, we get to do this together, this amazing new season that God's got us in. And so please know, we're not trying to guilt or manipulate, but we want to share. Now, Ephesians 4 Verse 11 and 12. Now these are the gifts Christ gave to the church. The apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, and the pastors, and the teachers. Their responsibility is to equip God's people to do his work and build up the church, the body of Christ. Okay. I'm going to shoot some wrong thinking that I bet a lot of people have. We've got these awesome pastors, and they're just going to do all this ministry, and they're going to see revival in our community, and they're going to do all these great things, and they're going to see people touched and saved. (laughs) Sounds good enough that people buy it. Our job is not to go out and do the work of the ministry. Our job is to equip you to go out and do the work of the ministry. Probably about 10 years ago, all these prophets, all these people were telling us, revival's going to come, revival's coming to your church, God's going to use you for revival, all this kind of stuff. And some of them started to try to tell me what that would look like, of, oh, your church will be open 24 hours for weeks and weeks, and your altars will be full all the time. And God immediately said, no, that's not what it's going to look like for you. What it's going to look like for you is people are going to come into your church one way, they're going to leave transformed, and they are going to take revival to where they go. Come on. You will go out and pray for the sick in your community. You will go out and love on people who are hurting that I'll never have access to. You see? Look at this. Ministry and building of the church is done by the people, not the pastors. Pastors equip you, but God tells you to do the work. Christianity is not a spectator sport. It's a call to action. Come on. (laughs) Some of you are like, oh. You know what? If you just accept Jesus today, do you know you have a power within you to still touch lives tomorrow? That's That's right. You don't have to have a Bible school degree. Heck, we don't have a Bible school degree. God can use you and use your story. It's just about sharing what God did for you. I'm like seeing someone sick and like, hey, do you know what? Can I just pray for you? And maybe you don't know how to pray. Just go, hey, in Jesus' name, pain go and healing flow on you. Simple. Right. But 
Every one of us are called to go out, but we all have to participate. We all have to participate. And um, so we want to talk about three points, three calls to action so that we can be part of what God's doing. Number one, invite. We all know somebody who needs what God is doing here. Every one of us knows somebody. Look at what it says in Romans 10, 14. Now, how can they call on him to save them unless they believe in him? And how can they believe in him if they've not ever heard about him? And how can they hear about him unless somebody tells them? So the Bible's really simple. It's breaking it down for us. Unless you share what God's doing in your life, and, and, and the impact he's been making in your life, your friends aren't going to know. Your, your, your work, your, your, your work uh, folks at work aren't going to know what's going on. Your neighbors aren't going to know. But when you start sharing what God has been in the middle of doing, restoring, healing, whatever it is in your life, automatically people go, really? Well, how, how did you do that? You know, I I, I laugh because I hear this all the time. They say, hey, I'm in Walmart. I can hear people say, if you ever need a miracle, just go to the Source Church. Come on, somebody. Now, why would that be going on? Because somebody got a breakthrough. They might not even be walking with God, but they're smart enough to realize if they're in dire straits, they know where to go. Are you hearing me? See, when we brought Dog the Bounty Hunter in the first time and 1,200 extra people showed up to church that were not church people, are you hearing me? All the other churches said, oh, he says, he might even cuss. I said, we'll be okay with that. Peter cussed and Jesus used them anyways. Are you with me? We're not going to get religious because he's going to reach into hell and pull 1,250 people out of hell that have never been in a church. We're going to love them. And that Sunday, I think 500 people gave their life to the Lord. Come on. And now we, we watch now because the people that have been there, sometimes when they get into a crisis, guess where they come? Come on, somebody. They come where they've been loved on. They may not be ready right now. But I'll tell you, when things don't start to work in their life the proper way that they think it should be, all of a sudden, they, well, we just got to go. Or they hear it at Walmart. Are you with me? <laughs> We should get on the speaker system. And go down there. <laughs> how, how many of you want revival here in Manatee County or in Winnipeg? Yeah. We want to see lives transformed. We want to see people healed. We want to see people come to know Jesus. Well, every one of you have a part to play in that. It's us together. That's what God's brought us together to do this. Now, I want to, I want to give you a, a couple stories. Just this week, one of our church family... Um, has been home sick and posted on, on social media asking people to join her online because she couldn't be at church, but posted how she's actually been for the last few months bringing somebody new to church every single month, every single week. Come on. Every single week. And some of them have been coming to know Jesus. And so she couldn't be in the house that Sunday, so she said, will you join me online? Will you commit to joining me online while I watch? (laughs) Right? But once you get that heart and revelation that your friends need what God's doing, suddenly it's not, well, I don't know, what do they think of me? They might think that you just helped them save their life. Come on. They might think that you just helped them find the miracle they needed. You know, um, we've had a couple people recently, and we have these cards, and they're at the back. And it says, will you join me? And it's just our website, a little about the church. And they're at the back, they're at the information table, grab some. But just in the last couple of months, we've had a f- several people now who've come to the church. And I always love asking, if you've probably been the victim on the other side of this, but how did you find out about the Source Church? Several of them now said, I was in the store, grocery store, I believe, and I was getting a book. And when I opened the book, the card was inside. And they've been coming to church. How creative. I won't say what store it is because I don't want the store to go checking all their books. But (laughs) who knows how many more are waiting to be found, right? Why not get creative, right? I'm not telling you all to go fill all the bookstores with these, but if that's what God puts on your heart, right? 
do what you gotta do. But the second thing, so the first one is to invite. That's how you can participate. Number two, serve. Mark 10, verse 43 to 45. If you want to be the greatest, then live as one called to serve others. The path to promotion comes by having the heart of a bond slave who serves everyone. For even the Son of Man did not come expecting to be served um, by everyone, but to serve everyone and to give his life as the ransom price for the salvation of many. If you want to achieve greatness in your walk with God, you've got to serve. Yeah. There's no other way. There's no other way. And not just waiting until the big position comes open. Well, once they ask me to lead this ministry, then I'll start serving. Now, serving means, hey, where do you need me? There's a difference between, these are my gifts, how can you use me? And the, the difference it to, these are my gifts, how can I serve? Come on. Very different. We have a heart in this church to just love and serve people, right? It's not about titles. It's just about digging in, serving. You know, each, and each Sunday it takes 54 volunteers for us to have a service here in this campus. Now, Winnipeg campus has some different numbers, but it takes 54 volunteers to do that for one service. And if somebody was missing, like the person bringing the donuts or the coffee, come on. Some of you would be mumbling or be like nodding off a little bit. I'm that's kidding. what we should have done today. We should have skipped the coffee and donuts and said, sorry, oh, nobody was there to serve. Oh, that's... Ooh, oh, ooh. yeah, see? I'm hitting where it hurts now. <laughs> Did I make my point? Uh, everybody felt the ouch. <laughs> Don't mess with um, my Jehovah Jama. <laughs> <laughs> but... How many of you appreciate coffee and donuts? How many of your kids appreciate donuts? Yeah. <laughs> How many of you don't appreciate the kids on the donuts, right? <laughs> but, um, you know, the new stat, it used to be 20% of the people do 80% of the work. It's sad, but there's a new statistic right now that 12% of the people do 88% of the work. In a church like ours, who has the heart to love and serve people, that should never even remotely come close. And I'm so grateful that we do have as big a team we have. But even with 54, I think it's going to take 75 people to do two services at that point. Um, but even 54, unfortunately, we have a lot of weeks where people are doubling up roles, you know, doing whole chunks of it. And there's no reason for that. All of us perceiving the season, all of us perceiving what God is doing and getting to be part of it, the miracles that happen in our teams while they're serving is staggering. Yes. I look at Liz... Do you guys catch that? She's serving in kids. She's been there for years. She would not stop serving, and so she rode her bike 16 miles each direction. And how many of us are just like, uh, I don't feel good. I'm tired this morning. I'm not going to go. <laughs> Let's just be really honest. Hey, there's days we don't feel like preaching, but we come. <laughs> it's a good thing, too, probably, right? I always prop her up, get her, get fired up. <laughs> You guys know the truth. Anyhow. Um, <laughs> moving right along. Yeah. Moving right along. But the interesting thing was, Liz, is because she was faithful to serve and did whatever it took to serve, I promised you that was not convenient. How many more hours every Sunday did she have to take to be able to bike there and back? We would have had every, she would have had every reason in the book to say, no, I'm not coming. But because she was faithful, Come on. God was faithful. Amen. Yeah. A lot of us might be believing for big things, but we're not giving God the faithfulness he needs for us to serve, for him to bring us the big things we're believing for. Yeah. Now, I understand some of you have just been so wounded and you need to sit and heal, and I get that, Right? But still, there's ways you can still be involved, right? Um, on, in your bulletins um, are something called this, and there's going to be more outside. We have a serve table out in the hub for, for Bradenton and Winnipeg. It's at the back. Um, and it, it shows all the different areas to serve. And I'm going to challenge you to find something. And as I said, if you're in that really wounded place and you're just trying to exist today, then be praying for us. Be praying, you know? 
just invite people in. Do, do your part that way. But for those of us who, who know it's time, um, there's ways we can do it. Here, um, jump in any time is the first. If you've never come through our commit class, you can serve in those areas. If you've come through our commit class, which is a two-week class, it's going to be starting in September for both campuses, then there's more areas that you can start serving. In, right? And so then after, then you get into our growth track. Victorious Living will start in um, September, I encourage you. If you haven't gone through that, it's a 10-week class. It'll, it'll radically transform your life. After that is advanced, where you can serve in more areas. Then if you go through our everyday leadership class, there's more areas to serve. <laughs> so just keep moving forward. But there's some place for everyone. And we're going to have a table out in, in the hub um, here in Florida, where you can talk to leaders, ask questions, and even sign up. But um, kids, do you know there's amazing things going on in kids' ministry? Amazing stuff. They're, they're praying for each other. They are embracing each other. There's, it's just amazing what's going on. Well, parents, maybe you want to take something and actually take it. You, know, you know what? Yeah, I'm going to start serving in kids once a month and, and start seeing what God is doing. Amen. But um, let's talk about. I want to talk about parking. Yeah, let's talk about parking. Oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Yeah, and just to answer the questions, yes, we know our building is too small. Yes, we know there's not enough parking. So, but we have solutions, right? Because where there's a will, there's a way. In your bulletin is a little map. This is such an easy way for you to serve into what God is doing right now. In here, in blue, are the parking spots off of our property. And we have agreements with all of these business owners and properties to be able to park in these places on Sundays. Praise God. And there's a lot of them. And it's just um, the Dollar General's right there, over here, these properties here, just a little bit beyond, all within a block. All within a block. But do you know how well you could serve our visitors by simply parking a little bit farther away? Even if you have to drop um, your family off. just Yeah, if you drop your family off. So that these spots can be for um, our elderly, fam- elderly, our single moms with kids, um, our first-time visitors, right? Just a little, little extra walking can serve people. Do you know, um, this is statistically proven, but if a visitor comes by and cannot find a parking spot, they will keep going. They're not going to walk five blocks to get into a church. They're going to keep walking. So how you can help us in this season is simply yes. park in one of these spots, right? And, and then leave these spots here for, as I said, you know, moms with young families, our elderly, our handicapped, um, that kind of stuff, which would serve amazingly. Um, yeah, in this, invite, take time to say hi to somebody on a Sunday. How many of you know how to smile? Awesome. Even if you don't have teeth, you can still smile. I can even tell that in, I can even tell in Winnipeg they're smiling, right? Smile at somebody. Say hi to somebody. Help somebody feel welcome. These are ways you can help us be part of this season. But we are going to give a 90-day challenge to both of our campuses. A 90-day challenge. This is not to the ones who are already serving on four different teams, which many people are. <laughs> many of our people are doubled up on multiple teams. But if you're not currently serving, would you give us 90 days of serving? Give us 90 days of serving. If it's not for you, great. But if you'd commit to 90 days of helping somewhere, of serving somewhere, and if the first team you sign up for is not it, that's great. We can transfer you to somewhere else. We want to find where you fit. But a 90-day challenge to help us see what God could do, right? We all want to see where God's taken us, but we have to be part of the process to get there, right? Amen. We have to perceive the season. So the third thing is give. Everybody say give. give. You know, there's a great story in the Bible after Moses took the children of Israel out, uh, out of Egypt and they, and they were uh, en route. God said, I want you to build a temple. And he started giving them all the, the, the breakdowns of how everything was supposed to be built. And so what Moses did is he went to the people and he asked them to financially contribute so that they could build the temple. And that's found in Exodus 35, verses 20 to 21. It says this, so the whole community of Israel left Moses because he had told them what's going on. He told them what he needed. He put the need, he put the vision out there. 
So the whole community of Israel left Moses and returned to their tents. All whose hearts were stirred and whose spirits were moved came and brought their sacred offerings to the Lord. So there's something really interesting in this, okay? And I want you to take a look at this. This is the best way to say it. The ones who saw it, who perceived what God was doing, responded with their giving. I'm not trying to manipulate you, but I know that when you participate in God's way of doing it, he blesses you more. Yes. Just like Liz, she was faithful in her giving, in her serving, and in doing that, her miracle came. Right. Yeah. right. The hearts were stirred, but then look what happened in Exodus 36, 6. So Moses gave the command, and this message was sent throughout the camp. Men and women, don't prepare any more gifts for the sanctuary. We have enough. And stuff, he actually had too much. Can you believe it? When have you ever heard a speaker get up, or a preacher get up and say, stop giving, we have too much? <laughs> Not very often. Why did they have too much? Why was there enough to do everything God had put in their hearts? Because people understood and they perceived the season they were in and that they needed to be part of it with their giving. And as a result, the tabernacle was built and everything else. God wants to do something so explosive here. But we, get, we have to be part of it, to respond to what God's doing. Let's not just grab what God has for us and walk out without ever understanding how he wants us to respond to that by inviting others, by being part of serving by be part of giving. You know, it, it might be you've only got a dollar to give. But if you give that daughter, dollar, I promise you, God will make that dollar such a blessing to you. Yes. Right. Because he just wants you to be part of it and to not miss the season we're in. Isaiah 54, 2 and 3, it says, Increase is coming, so enlarge your tent and add extensions to your dwelling Hold nothing back. Make the tent ropes longer and the pegs stronger. You will increase and spread out in every direction. Your sons and daughters will conquer nations and revitalize desolate cities. I believe God has put us in this season right now where he wants to expand what we're doing here at the Source Church. Do you know, growth, there's, there's kind of some weird ideas about growth. We've been part of mega churches that are in revival mode and healthy as all get out, and we've been part of small churches. We've been part of healthy, uh, large churches that aren't healthy. We've been part of churches that are healthy, okay? Seen it all. We've been in small churches, all this kind of thing. A lot of people think, oh, we can't grow, because when we get to be a big church, then it's just not the same. No, what I believe is that the presence of God is not limited to size, when the presence of God is moving and God is in a place like he is here, whether we're 100 or 5,000, his presence is what does the work. And we still are the same family. We're growing in a healthy place. Yes. And God is still going to move. And God is still going to do the same things he's doing right now, just on a bigger scale. Amen. So we don't have to be scared of growth. But... On the other side, we have to make sure we're cooperating with growth. Mm -hmm. Because growth means people are meeting Jesus. Yes. It means people are being transformed. How can we limit ourselves? Well, I only want to do one service. I just, I like it, right? We don't have to serve more. We don't have to. There's no, you know, they're handling it fine. But at some point, these seats are going to fill. And once we're at 80%, which we're already over, stats say once you're at 80% capacity... You cannot grow past it. We're over 80%. <laughs> we have an overflow, which is great for sudden bursts, but I don't think any of you would want to come and do service in overflow week after week. So we're in a season right now where we're going to have to be looking at two services for here. Mm -hmm. Because it's, we're perceiving the season, which means we need more people to be part of what God's doing. In Winnipeg, at the rate you guys are growing right now, you're going to outgrow that auditorium probably in the next year and have to go to a second service in the next year, year and a half. But it's a good thing, yes. right? Because it means more people are being impacted. That's not something to kind of go, oh, shoot, I don't get to sleep in as long and sunny more. <laughs> Instead, it's like, whoa, 
I get to be part of this, right? I get to be part of this. I wonder what God is going to do. As he said, I say this to our team all the time. When we are serving and participating in what God is doing in this season, we get a front row seat to what God's doing. Come on. Because we don't create what God is doing. We set the tone. And as he works through us, we get to be the first to experience it. So as you serve, as you invite, as you give, you are in that front row seat getting to first experience what God is about to do in lives and transform. Amen. Right? It's a huge time. I like what it says, hold nothing back. What does that mean for us? We're all in. You know, we just finished the men's conference, and they said, I needed a name. I said, I need full throttle. Come on, people. Why just run your vehicle if you have open space to go and no speed limits at 25 miles an hour? When you could be doing 125. Are you with me? So in life, we can idle along or we can put the pedal down with God and watch what God does because he'll just increase. Great story I'm going to wrap up with. There's this great story in the Bible about God sharing. He would always share these word pictures and stories with his disciples trying to train them. And he taught this uh, about the talents and how he gave one guy one talent, one got two, another one got five. And, and the Bible says according to their ability. He gave it to them. Of course, we know the story goes, the guy with one talent decides he's going to do nothing and idle. Scared he would lose it. Scared he would lose it. The one with two goes full throttle and he hits four. The one with five goes full throttle and gets ten. God's celebrating the ones that were going full throttle, but the one that was doing nothing and idling, he got really angry at him said some really not very nice things. And he said, take it from the one that did nothing and give it to the one with 10. See, God just wants to get the job done. Are you hearing me? God just wants to multiply what's in your hand right now. God just wants to expand your territory. And I believe that when we put God first... When we submit ourselves to him, when, 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 we, when we tell him, God, I'm going to give the best I can. God, I'm going, to, I'm going to serve the best I can. And you put him first. That's when his super comes on your natural. And because you're going in full throttle. See, what, God's not mocked. Whatsoever you sow, that shall you also that's why it said in Luke 6, 38, given it shall be given. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. See, it didn't, it didn't say it was just about money. It just said it's what you're giving. Are you with me? Yeah. You give somebody a frown or a bad gesture, you're going to get something coming back you may not like. But the Bible says with the measure you use, it'll be measured back to you. In other words, I'm determining if I'm going to just give God 50% because I really don't want to burn up the other 50, God says, okay, I'll give him 50%. Come on, somebody. We come to, I just want God's best, but I don't want to do anything for him. I just heal my body, fix my finances, get my marriage in line, this and that, but I don't want to be involved with having to do anything. Come on, people, we know that's not going to work. God gives us abilities for us to step into things. Amen. Amen. Look at this as we close off. Let's together run with what God is allowing us to steward to the best of our ability. Yes. We're in this together. We get to be part of what God is busting out. All of us together get to be part of seeing lives transformed every single week. As I said, we hear about five to ten physical miracles every Sunday, never mind the ones we don't. God is in a specific, unique season for us that I don't want to miss. And we want to move into that next season. Is change ever fun? Is transition ever fun? No, but it's sure worth it what God can do when we all work together. I want to give everybody an opportunity to make sure your life is right with the Lord. That if something happened to you today and you didn't make it home, that you would know heaven's your home. This is very, very important because being in the family of God gives you access to all the benefits that God has for your life. Outside of the family, you don't qualify for them. Inside the family, they're all yours. Your inheritance is waiting for you inside the family. 
and God wants to start construction on your home if you have never given your life to the Lord. The Bible says in his house are many mansions. He wants to start building yours. If you make that decision today, construction starts today. I want you to know how much he loves you and me. That's why Jesus came. He says, these guys are not going to make it on their own. Jesus stepped in and picked up the tab for you and I. So all we would have to do is accept him. Ask him to come into our lives. I'm going to pray a prayer here in a moment. And wherever you are, whether you're online, on the online campus, whether you're in Africa, whether you're in Winnipeg, whether you're here in in Bradenton or Ellington, Florida, we're going to pray this prayer out loud. I'm going to invite everybody to repeat it after me as I pray it. And the Bible says when you speak it with your mouth and you believe it in your heart. So online, say this out loud. Prayer goes like this, Father in Jesus' name. Father in Jesus' name. I ask you to forgive me. I ask you to forgive me. Jesus. Jesus. Come into my life. Come into my life. Be my Lord. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. Be my Savior. And help me to live for you. Help me to live for you. Every day of my life. Every day of my life. In Jesus' name I pray. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. If you-